girl, can you double check your audio? This is so bad. Is this mic from the 1800s? I think I can hear the Titanic sinking in the background. You should try the new Rode NT1 5th Gen Black Large Diaphragm Condenser Microphone. It will fix all your life problems. Okay, I know a little about audio, I digress. In past videos, not only has my audio been mono when it should have been stereo, it also had peaks where it should not, but I guess at least I'm trying by using a microphone in the first place. But what even is a microphone? How does it work? And can I do it myself? Fine. I'll do it myself. Okay, so for the ingredients, first we're going to need our old friend wire. But before that, let's step away for a bit. Do you remember this from your childhood? It's called a lover's telephone and is a type of acoustic, meaning non-electric microphone that uses mechanical energy by making the string here move to transmit the sound waves. This is a very basic concept and was actually documented as far back as 1664 by Robert Hooke. Oop, wait, I think I'm getting a call. Hello, it's history calling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've done history segments before, but none have been so difficult to pinpoint like this one, which I don't even know why, but it seems that with this invention, there have been so many different hands in the play at the same time or around the same time. So I'm linking just all of my sources below so you can look it up yourself and take everything with a grain of salt, I guess. But here comes a brief history of the microphone. Most often named for early concept was Johann Philipp Reis, whose device used a metallic strip on a membrane. When sound waves like speech hit the membrane and vibrated in response, and as it moved, the metallic point made contact with another part of a circuit, which created a fluctuating electrical current. The key problem though was that the metal plate would lift off and connect irregularly, producing an interrupted current instead of a smooth continuous flow as human speech would have required. On March 10th, 1876, Alexander Graham Bell employed a very similar transmitter design and got a patent for his form of the microphone, which he used to make the very first famed telephone call, Mr. Watson, come here, I need you. This was like a big thing because Mr. Watson was his assistant and he was in a different room. So when the phone call came through and Mr. Watson entered the room from which the phone call was made of, it was kind of like like the first time that human speech had been transported over space in a way, which is crazy to think about. From here on out, microphone builds became increasingly more capable and also slightly different, which is why we're now crossing the history section with the product design section. So we can actually look at at least four examples here. Each microphone is essentially a transducer, meaning that it converts sound waves, which are mechanical energy, into electrical signals. These electrical signals can then be amplified, recorded, transmitted over radio, or processed for various other applications like telephone or broadcasting. Number one, carbon microphone. Emil Bolina and Thomas Edison developed the carbon microphone in 1877, which became widely used in telephones and early radio. Carbon granules have a property called variable resistance, meaning that depending on pressure, they change their electrical resistance. The microphone consists of two metal plates separate by granules of carbon. One plate is very thin and faces towards the speaking person acting as a diaphragm. So when this moves, the pressure inside moves depending on the carbon granules and this is how the electrical signals get modified. Number two, condenser microphones, which are still used until this day. Condenser microphones are still mainly used for recording vocals in the studio as they are very sensitive and offer highly accurate sound, especially also for higher frequencies. Invented by E.C. Wendt at Bell Labs, the condenser or capacitor microphone, as it is also called, uses a diaphragm that is coated in metal right next to a charged back plate that makes up the other part of the capacitor. So as our diaphragm, the front plate here moves, it changes the capacitance, which is then used to convert the sound waves into electrical signal. Number three, the dynamic microphone. Went to also help to pioneer the dynamic microphone, which uses electromagnetic induction, and is also the type of microphone we're going to be building today. So stay tuned. These mics are rugged, less sensitive to humidity, and can handle louder volumes, which is why they're now used mainly for broadcasting or live stage performances, for example. Okay, we nearly finished the last type of microphone I want to touch on for today because there are so many more and I think this video is not a uh, what types of microphone are there but rather than we want to actually build a microphone okay there are also ribbon microphones and ribbon microphones are kind of the same it's also using electromagnetic things inside two magnets there is this small metal plate and as this moves it creates a current kind of like the latest thing and it creates very smooth and natural vocals which is also why they're used in the studio or for sound recording and some people are really big fans of them also just to name them they were co-invented in the early 1920s by Dr. Walter Schottke and Erlich Golach Go Go then as already teased we're going to be needing magnets. I bought these neodyme magnets because they're supposed to be really like strong kind of magnets. Then we're going to be needing some kind of audio output cable that we're going to modify and connect everything to. That's like basically it. Other than that, we're going to be needing some tape and some kind of like tools and stuff for connecting the cables. But let's get into it. It's actually not that hard. <laughs> Oh, and we're also going to be needing a CD or something else actually you can use, but I'm using a CD to build this up on. 
Step one, strip the wires so we can connect everything later. I'm working with a normal headphone jack here, but make sure you use one that does have a microphone connection. It's a bit of trial and error to find out which of the four cables inside you need eventually. Unless you know your stuff, I don't. I was just trying out everything until I found the right ones. We're going to be making a small coil out of magnet wire. And over this coil comes our diaphragm, which in this case is just a tape I'm fixing it with. Make sure to get the enamel of both ends of the wire before you connect them with your headphone jack or mic input. You can do that by burning it off or scraping off. I'm also, of course, linking my reference video down below for this. Because this build wasn't sensitive enough, I sized up in a second version with a bigger coil and more magnets, but the concept is the same. As our diaphragm moves, the sound waves cause the coil to move within the magnetic field, creating a varying electrical flow. Okay, um, short update, I'm still in the works here. It didn't fully work with connecting with the computer, like that didn't work at all, but now I had this super smart idea to connect it with my other microphone so I am recording over this one now and it's so interesting what is coming out of it I'm I'm just like okay we will see I'm trying some more things and I will show you how both of these because I have two microphone builds now separately how both of them work you can hear it huh? <laughs> okay so what for the telephone was mr. Watson can you hear me for me was do you like tomatoes do you like tomatoes? One, two, three. Important question, leave your answer down below. Anyway, I finally managed to make it work. I mean, I tried it first with this kind of build. The problem here was I think the coil inside was a bit too weak again. And I think that's a theme around many of my videos now that the coil needs to be bigger. There needs to be a better coil. And also I tried in the beginning to connect all of them to my computer, expecting it to work. But my computer obviously didn't recognize this as a microphone. So the smart thing to do was to connect it to this here, to my Zoom recorder, which I'm happy I came up with this idea because I, I thought it would definitely work with the computer. And I even went out to buy three more headphone jacks just to experiment again. It worked with the recording here because this thing recognizes anything that is plugged in as a microphone automatically. So you can do way more tests with this. And the build that ended up working is this one here, um, which is basically one-to-one -one the same thing here but we have a bigger coil and more magnets inside. So I think it's kind of like with everything in technology, the better your oh, power, the better. So by making this magnet here way stronger and the coil a bit thicker and longer, um, it was just easier to get the sound, even though it's not like good sound. It's not like I built an HD microphone here. But for me, this is not about building a crystal clear microphone. This is about proving the science and understanding how things work. When I heard everything back here, I was like, oh my God, it actually works. Because I did a lot of trials where they were just like, you know, like you, you couldn't really hear something, like the mic wasn't connected correctly. So it's really a lot of trial and error, but it did work. Also, I have to say that even though not everything is voice, that I got these like, like sounds I really like those as well like from an artistic standpoint I think they have a lot of potential so I do want to play you a little rave set that I just made um, in half an hour with these sounds that came out of it um, just because I thought it was fun I present to you um, DIY microphone music <laughs> Yeah, I guess this is 10 seconds of nothing, but I see the potential. I mean, if I spend a lot more time on this, I think this could be a great set, you know? Um, alas, I don't have all the time in the world, so this is the end of that. <laughs> anyway, all in all, I just have to say thank you so much for watching this video. I now own this, a Mozart CD with a headphone jack coming out of it, connected by two thin enameled wires. If anybody asks me what I'm doing in my free time, I just tell them I'm creative um, and this is what I do. Anyways, if you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. That would really help it. And also you could subscribe to the channel if you want to see whatever I come up with next, because believe it or not, my videos are not pre-planned. They're just like whatever I feel like doing that week if I have free time. Um, so that's why there is no schedule and no plan, but you can be along for the ride if you enjoy these types of things. And yeah, as always, have a nice day, have a nice night, wherever you are. And find me back on my channel. But what even is a microphone? I have so much electrical stuff now from all the stuff that I built. Somebody comes into here, they're going to think I'm be building a bomb or something. Oops. But it is saying, do you like tomatoes? But jingle ladies, never give up. I hope this microphone is to your liking today.